this is Cynthia Rudin. I'm going to give a really quick introduction to our new review paper on interpretable machine learning. It's called Interpretable Machine Learning, Fundamental Principles and 10 Grand Challenges. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the paper. And like I said, it's got sort of 10 challenge areas that are relevant to interpretable machine learning. And I want to go through it and tell you what they are real quick. Okay, so the first one is sparse logical models. And we focus mainly on decision trees. So these are models that use if-then rules to make uh, predictions. And the second um, challenge area is scoring systems, which are very sparse models with, um, very sparse linear models with integer coefficients. And these have been used in healthcare and criminal justice for 100 years. Not usually used, not always designed using machine learning, but they have been used for 100 years. Generalized additive models is the third one. And I want to point out that generative, um, generalized additive models are actually a, um, a superset, of, like they're, they're sort of more general than, um, than scoring systems. And scoring systems are sort of a special case of linear models. So that kind of gives you a sense of how these are related to each other. The fourth one is case-based reasoning, which is kind of like K-nearest neighbors but K-nearest neighbors is only the, you know, the tip of the iceberg. Um, now case-based reasoning methods are used in deep learning, and so you can have interpretable deep learning methods that use case-based reasoning. And they're, they're, they're actually, it's not just K-nearest neighbors, it's like K-nearest parts of you know, prototypes, and so it's, it, it can get very interesting and elaborate. The fifth one is complete supervised disentanglement of neural networks. For computer vision, mostly we're, we're discussing here. And the idea uh, for this is that you want different um, types of information to travel through the network in, in, um, through very specific neurons. So you might want to create a neuron that's like a grandmother neuron <laughs> or a neuron that's like a, um, an airplane neuron so that all the information about airplane that the network is using to make a prediction goes through that one neuron. And then the sixth one is unsupervised disentanglement. So the difference between supervised disentanglement and unsupervised disentanglement is that um, for supervised disentanglement, you know what the concepts are. So you know that you want this neuron to be the airplane neuron, and you know what an airplane is, and you can provide data to the network that tells it what an airplane is. Whereas with unsupervised disentanglement, you don't, you don't know what the concepts are in advance. You don't, there's no notion of an airplane necessarily. And so I have an example on the slide from material science where you don't really know what the concepts are. It's not something that a human would normally think about. Like, what are the specific patterns in the unit cell of a material that, um, that matter for, its, for the way it behaves? The seventh one is dimension reduction for data visualization. Um, dimension reduction has long been used to try to uh, take high dimensional data and project down to low dimensions to try to keep its structure so that you can understand what's in the data and helps you build models that are hopefully interpretable and make sense. Uh, the eighth one is machine learning models that incorporate physics and other generative or causal constraints. A lot of people don't even, they wouldn't even think um, a model is interpretable unless it, it has um, the correct causal um, information in it. And so um, this eighth challenge deals with how to, how to put that, um, how to, how to put that information into a machine learning model, how to put physics into a machine learning model. And the ninth challenge has to do with characterization of the Rashomon set of good models. Um, sometimes you don't just want the best model according to your loss function. You might want to look at a whole bunch of models that are good and try to understand um, what that set looks like so that you could pick the model that's, that's best for your particular task at hand. And then the, um, the tenth one is interpretable reinforcement learning. Um, so you'd like to know here how the agent makes its decisions. You, you want to know in an, in an interpretable way what, what's the policy of the agent. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this review paper, and um, we'll see you later.